Welcome back to a new part of my video series where I'm converting this 1978 bus to all electric. Now my goal over the next couple videos is to install the entire drivetrain. As you can see, I have everything ready to install into the car. This video in particular is gonna focus on how to install the EV West components onto the electric motor. So this would include the motor coupler, the transmission housing adapter, the custom flywheel, and the clutch components. So after we're done with this, the motor will be prepped and ready to install onto the transmission. So stay tuned to see how I did it. Well, we have all the tools and materials that we need to mount to this motor that makes it to where it can fit onto our transmission. And I'm gonna take you through that right now. Now I took a lot of time to make these instructions for myself and I'm gonna take you through these steps here. The motor that we're using here, just to remind people that haven't been following my videos, this is a Warp 9 series wound DC motor. It's a very old motor, it's probably 15 years old at least, and it's used. The reason I'm going to use this is because despite the fact that I spent a good deal of money on the transmission adapter plate, a custom aluminum flywheel, and a custom hub coupler from EV West, is because these same parts fit on this motor as well as newer AC induction motors like the Netgain Hyper Drive set or Hyper 9, I believe it's called, and the HPEV, I believe, the AC50 and AC51. So if I ever want to upgrade from this used older series wound DC setup to a newer modern AC induction motor setup with regen capability and all that. I don't have to replace all of this expensive machined hardware because those different motors all have the same shaft size and motor face. Well, step one, we want to deal with the motor coupler on that shaft. And this is the piece right here that came from EV West. It's a very nice machine part. And as you can see, it has a cutout that goes on the shaft. But notice that when I try to put it on the shaft, it's super tight. It will not go on. Yeah, I could probably take those bolts off and beat the heck out of it with a mallet or something to get it on, but that would ruin the part. What EV West recommends how you install this thing is by heating it up to about three or 400 degrees. Then it'll slide right on, and once it cools off, it'll have a very tight friction connection to the shaft. I'm gonna remove the bolts and set screws from this piece. There's a set screw right there, and then these are the flywheel bolts. We'll confirm that the shaft on the motor is clean and the key is installed. Although EV West does include a key with this, I kind of like this key better that went kind of with the motor. It's longer and it has that curved part that fits that motor shaft really well. So we'll go ahead and install that in there. And then I made sure this is all degreased and cleaned up. So we've got a clean shaft and we've got the key installed. Well, all right, here's my little heater set up here. I just threw some crap together. I was gonna use my map gas torch. I don't think I'll need that, but it's there as a backup. All I've got is a, a heat gun, and I put uh, this aluminum flashing on my floor of my workshop, make sure I'm using concrete floor, not my epoxy floor. I don't wanna melt anything or burn anything. I just have this little stove pipe ring that I found in my junk metal. I'm just gonna kinda put this in here lay this over and basically use it kind of as to contain the heat a little bit. Turn this on high, let it sit here for a bit, just shooting into there on the, on the piece. And once we're up to temperature, put in my welding gloves, grab the part and slide it on. Let's see if the, how it goes. All right, well that wasn't bad. So about three minutes of the heat gun on high, got it to temperature, slid right on. 
waited about 15, 20 minutes, and it's not even barely lukewarm. So it's fully cooled off. I recommend don't try to rush it. Don't put a ice or a cold rag on it or anything like that to try to cool it off quickly. Just let it sit for about 15 minutes and it's ready to go. So the final step of this motor hub installation is to take the little, this little set screw that they give you that goes right there and we're going to put some thread, blue thread lock on it and we're just going to tighten that in and we are done with this motor hub. Okay, so next step, we're gonna install the transmission adapter plate. It's gonna to mount to these four holes around the sides with these bolts provided. There's one flat side of this that has the, some threaded inserts that's meant to be on the top. What these are for is EV West offers a optional controller mounting plate that can go mount to the top side of the motor. Now I didn't buy that but I might be able to have some use for these threads. And uh, also you can see there's multiple holes that you could use in case your transmission requires it to be cambered different ways but we're just going to go ahead and um, line up the top hole here with the top of this which is about right here and again what I'm going to use is I'm going to use thread lock and torque these down to about 15 to 18 pounds. Well the supply bolts were bottoming out about a quarter of an inch before they got seated so I ended up having to buy a half inch shorter version of the bolt so take two. Okay, so next up we're going to install our flywheel. Now there's, uh, I need to clean this up a little bit, but there's a center bearing right here. There's actually a little needle bearing right there. So the first thing I'm going to do is apply some bearing grease to that and make sure that that's well coated. This is where the end of the drive shaft will spin around in. Okay, now I got the bearing greased up. We'll go ahead and just put it on. Now this, this flange area should seat all the way into this little cutout here. So it actually should be, it actually should go in there. Yeah, make sure it's going in there. And we'll get the, get it lined up. Okay, now as far as torque specs, if you were to just look at the torque specs that are in the Bentley manual for flywheel bolts, it's around 65 foot pounds. So if you were just expecting to torque this down at 65 foot pounds, do, please do not do that. You will crack that. It, this is aluminum, not only that, that, but it's a lot less mass than the you know, steel flywheel being referred to in the manual. So what we wanna do here is we're gonna apply blue thread locker to the bolts, but we're only gonna torque them down to about 20 to 22 pounds. So that's our spec for this. Let's go ahead and bolt this in. All right, we have our flywheel attached. I used kind of the diagonal pattern and made sure it was uh, torqued down. The next thing we're gonna do is the pressure plate here. This is the Kennedy Stage 2 pressure plate and 200 millimeter MP clutch disc. So what we're gonna do here is first just, I've already done this, but just clean make sure there's no debris on the surfaces just clean that real well clean the pressure plate surface as well too then um, what we'll do is we'll take our clutch alignment tool and we'll just put our clutch disc in there notice i've kicked back i've tilted back the motor so that this thing doesn't you know fall forward if it's if it uh, make sure it gets aligned properly one of the most difficult things I've found going back and forth to the hardware store is finding the correct bolts. And I have verified, I had issues with the stock pressure plate bolts that would have come stock, but I have verified that these are in fact uh, M8 fine thread. So I got, I made sure I had one inch M8 fine thread bolts and I've got a lock washer. So 
and I'm not going to use thread locker on this because I think this, this uh, flywheel can get pretty hot with the clutch disc. So I'm just going to torque these down to uh, 15 pounds. So somewhere between 12 and 18 pounds is what you want to torque down your pressure plate at. So I'll probably go with uh, about 15 on that. All right, let's get to that. Well, there it is, folks. We've got the entire set of EV West products installed, as well as the clutch and, and everything like that. It's looking good. And now what we're ready to do is pair that to the new transmission, the newly rebuilt transmission and the newly rebuilt axles. And that will complete our drivetrain when we install these in the car. So stay tuned for that next video. And if you're not subscribed, please do so and be notified that this next video is coming. Thanks for watching.